So this is uh, still here, the yurt, still in the suburb of Joensu. Um, I'm using the time waiting for dry weather to uh, take down the yurt and pack it. Um, just at the same time, uh, like working on different things, like here, this is working on the carpet, um, need to make the opening for the middle. And um, yeah, so I just want to <coughs> show you um, this stove and I want to share a few words about the stove, tell you what it is. There have been some questions. Um, what's the story of the stove? So, um, <coughs> yeah, I knew that when I have the idea to live in a yurt all year round in Finland where we can have temperatures of minus 35 degrees Celsius in the winter, and actually plus 35 degrees Celsius in the summer um, that not only I need a very good year that is like adjusted to the uh, Finnish conditions but also that for the winter I need a proper stove, um, strong stove that is matching the dimensions of the yurt. So <clears throat> and it was like kind of coincidence that I found this this stove in particular um, and when I saw like a video uh, by, made by Ralf Fröhlich from Jotenland um, about this stove, I immediately contacted the um, <coughs> manufacturer um, and want to share a little bit the story of this stove. So uh, the name of the gentleman is Claudius um, and he's um, the person behind or working for um, Van Glor Kesselbau. Uh, and they have been making central heating systems for a long time, to my understanding. Um, so a lot of know-how in making uh, stoves and heating systems. And he was thinking to make a stove to um, to facilitate um, hot water uh, making, like in big scale, for refugee camps. And um, for this reason, he devised uh, de he designed a very modular stove. So. Uh, the stove is called Emma 130. Um, this particular model here is the Emma 130 with a heavy duty burning chamber and um, like an air heat, heat exchanger. It's also possible to take this part off, it's just kind of set on and um, put a water heater which is a bit higher than. Also, there's another heat exchanger which is higher. I found uh, this lower one to be a bit more convenient for cooking. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so this is basically the base here and you can also buy from him only the burning chamber without the stove around. So um, to my knowledge he makes two different burning chambers, a heavy duty version and a normal version. The burning chamber is, itself is made from stainless steel, this is normal milled steel, uh, everything is welded. And um, so yeah, it's, it's a rocket stove. Um, kind of obviously, and I will soon fire her up. Um, so it's possible to feed her. Uh, I say her because her name is Emma, and Emma is a female name. And uh, <coughs> take this out for a moment. So uh, you can actually feed one meter long woods in here, which is really nice. That means less work. <coughs> um, what I found like a really good diameter is this kind of wood something that um, you basically uh, find where they do uh, thinning. Um, yeah, so you have like two two openings, um, the kind of main door um, with, uh, which you can like regulate here the air intake um, and then there is this vertical burning chamber. Um, the gases uh, go up in here into this heat exchanger and then kind of like up from here and then down here and then up through the uh, through the flue. Um, the flue is something that I added so this has nothing to do with the stove also this 50 liter water tank is my addition to it. Uh, got really lucky found this on a flea market actually uh, insulated flue and, uh, <coughs> and the uh, water tank. Um, so I will just uh, fire her up and um, just leave the video running for the time um, and see. So just take the uh, smallest sticks now 
and throw in some birch bark. So maybe change the camera angle a bit here. So put in some birch bark. Here now, so we only have <coughs> heat intake or air intake through here. So you can see this one I closed, and um, yeah, no smoke coming in here. The heat seems to go already nicely into towards the chimney. Here. So now with this draft I think we can open also this one there's a nice holder for this. Uh, you can hear why it's called a rocket stove. Straight away. I'm gonna close this now. I don't know if that's too early or so, I still need to learn using her efficiently. And um, I've put this fan here, <clears throat> so this is already getting warm now, this is, yeah, let's see how long I can hold my hand on it, it starts getting too hot, <laughs> not much longer, uh, yes, that was about it, <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's heating up quite fast, so um, <clears throat> And I think if I just give this one um, a little tug, ah, uh, not yet. Yeah, this will kick off soon, it needs to heat up first. Um, yeah, that was basically, it's the Emma that's firing her up very fast. Uh, the name Emma, by the way, I, I think at least it's uh, because of a train engine from a German um, children's story by the name of Emma. Um, Emma, of course in German, Emma. <laughs> um, I added a thermometer here to, uh, to show the um, exhaust heat um, and also put a thermometer here to show the temperature of the water. I think now it's just like 10 liters in here um, because this tank shouldn't run dry. And um, yeah, interesting thing about this tank is that um, like these are designed for saunas right this tank so that you can have your hot water and and the sauna stoves they get them really hot so you get you get boiling water quite fast usually they are but even smaller um, and I originally bought it for a sauna project and then I saw that hey it actually fits on the Emma and um, was somehow afraid that yeah but why would I do this put this in the in the tent uh, or in the yurt because I will have a steam problem but uh, now the fan starts running, so uh, distributing the air uh, more um, equally, so not to have this one warm area, one cool area. Um, so yeah, so um, this this tank, actually I was afraid that I would have like a problem with, with steam, right? Like that the water would boil and I would have a problem with steam, but um, it turns out that the the stove is so efficient or burns so um, so nicely that the the heat actually doesn't go out the chimney but it goes into the heat exchanger. Yeah, so um, the temperature by the flue, like 
so far it has always been maximum um, between two and three hundred let's say on average um, so the temperature of the water doesn't get as hot so easily even on a long burn uh, like I won't get the temperature of the water to to boiling or to steam uh, and that's just like making use of some excess heat right so I get some warm water for for washing for dishes just as an extra on the side uh, without having the steam problem so yeah and um, just added some more wood and yeah that's that's it burning nicely that's the Emma stove um, it's rated at 8 kilowatt um, and I think uses something like two three kilos uh, of wood per hour it depends of course on the wood um, and what else to say um, yeah I think I should mention that I got this uh, this stove um, sponsored so like Claudius was uh, excited about our project uh, we're building a resilience hub here um, in, in eastern Finland in this town um, trying to raise the, our, our lifestyle to, um, to as high sustainability scale as possible and for this we need different shelters yeah so in the normal houses the city living is not going to it's not possible to make it sustainable so um, <clears throat> for this reason um, like we are working on this this project um, and it's of course experimentation and Claudius really liked the idea and I think also it's it's a good opportunity to actually get some um, kind of outside of the laboratory uh, measurements right so to to have um, the the Emma in in constant use um, in, a, in a real situation where you have not just uh, sometimes but like you use it as a main heating source uh, you have really like challenging temperatures so to see if this stove is up for that challenge and so my first impression uh, is clearly yes that's my impression and also the yurt maker uh, Stevie from Yurta um, Finnish yurt maker he um, was here and set up the yurt with me and uh, talked with him about his impression on the stove and um, he said that he is used to only have one layer of felt as the insulation on the on the wall and the roof of the yurt this one has two layers of felt uh, and then of course the outer layer um, and so he says like for a similar yurt his experience is one layer of felt and then uh, kind of a normal average stove with less efficiency and the output of six kilowatt and so he he thinks that his estimate um, by his experience that he thinks I will be I will be fine so um, let's see about this um, I'm curious um, time will tell yeah and so in the future uh, especially in the next autumn next winter I will hopefully um, have a more permanent location for the yurt and um, then take take measurements right so to see the outside temperature to see the inside temperature uh, see the amount of wood that we use the, the burning time um, temperature developments um, yeah so that's that's basically um, what um, I, per I personally think is very interesting to see Okay, so that was it. Um, short video about the Emma, and um, I will put the link to uh, to the stove. It's Raketenofen, Raketen-ofen.de. I will put the link down in the description, um, and I'm sure Claudius is happy to answer to um, questions. Also, I'm happy to answer to questions. So if you have comments or questions, just put them down in the comments. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Also, thank you, Claudius. Um, again, like I'm not telling good things about this because I got this for free. It's really like, to me, it's it's, it's about honesty. I mean, like adults don't lie. That's that's kind of the number one sign of adulthood, like not lying. So, and um, yeah, I got this stuff supplied for free, um, and I I don't see a reason why this should make me tell only good things. Um, so far, I haven't really found anything kind of bad. Um, 
like some challenges I had, I can maybe show quickly. So, challenge is that, um, so the, this 50 liter water tank is outside of this axis, axle, right? The stove itself is about 50 kilo. So, um, that means that I will, it, it will be very unstable. So I made a, a platform, kind of a long leg that ex is extending beyond the water tank and connected it here to the foot. So um, to just make it more stable. Um, anything else I found? Um, just throw in some woods. Yeah, you can you can actually, uh, now that I, I'm here fueling, throwing more wood in, um, it's also possible like to, when you put sufficient like right sized wood, you can close it and um, have a very slow burn, like less efficient, not this kind of rocket kind of burn. Um, what I found very useful is to have this kind of hook. Um, it allows me to to open the door, like this door is getting hot obviously, so uh, it's very easy to open, also to adjust the ventilation here. Yeah, so um, that's, I find it very useful. Okay, that was it. That was um, first impression on the Emma firing her up. Uh, you can see it's a nice, nice steady burn. Um, exhaust temperature still under 200. Yeah, not much change there. Uh, this fan is going nice and wild and it's really radiating a lot of heat. I, um, I keep the door open on the yurt um, because it would be too warm. I just wanted to make a video um, about the Emma. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good life.